Anakin. <laughs> is that a toddy? Is that what that is? Toddy, that yeah. Is? Yeah, okay. <laughs> all right, well, we're on to the stream. Uh, welcome all you wonderful he human beings out there in Twitch land. Um, just, this is our first stream as affiliate, and so this is all brand new to us. Um, to me and such. So I guess I'll kind of for the for the people who are on the stream with us now and for the people who are, uh, of course, uh, playing right now, you don't know what this is. So basically what Twitch Affiliate is, is um, we've had uh, we've hit a uh, threshold, if you will, of having everybody involved in uh, or having every having viewers involved and, and having um, streamed enough that Twitch thinks they can make money off of us. And that we should probably try to make money off of it too. Um, so the idea is that now we have subscriptions available on the Windy D Windy J D and D channel. Um, so if you like the content that you got here, uh, hit that subscribe button. You can also gift a subscription to somebody. Uh, and if you have so are so inclined, you can uh, also use your Twitch Prime subscription. All of those uh, provide income to this group so that we can actually buy all the content that we've been using to get all the stuff done. Um, because let's be honest, I have not made a dollar on playing D&D &D online at all, but I've been having fun doing it anyway, so it's probably worth it in the end. Nonetheless, we still want to be able to do more. And then you can also throw out some uh, uh, some of those bits that you can buy up in one of those corners. I forget where it is, um, but bit, buy bits and then share them with your favorite streamers ourselves included um, by throwing them into the chat and they kind of bounce around our screen. We now also have new emotes. Uh, so for any of you who have watched our uh, Sunken Citadel campaign, uh, you know how much of a uh, character Meepo became before un his untimely demise, pretty much right at the very beginning of last session. Um, and so that is, we now have uh, the Meepo emote as a hype emote. And of course we have a rest in peace emote as well. Uh, you can look at all that. And there's a couple of extra other things you can do in the chat as well. As always, you've always been able to roll for the DM. And actually, I'm going to get us rolling, get the uh, channel rolling a little bit for us today to make decisions for the DM. Um, but uh, you can also uh, inf influence us by saying, hey, don't forget to hydrate. Um, you know, having our st uh, streamers or having our watchers kind of look out for us is never a bad thing. But also, uh, you can influence the DM as well. Um, by throwing out some of those points that you've, uh, those guild points that you will have accumulated in Twitch, including make the DM automatically fail, make the DM automatically succeed, and all sorts of other fun things like that. You will see ads if you are not a subscriber, um, but if you are a subscriber, those ads go away. Just saying. So that is now all of the hints about what affiliate means for the trend for this for the for the guild which is kind of cool and very excited about that but now we actually are not here to talk about make us making money because that's not what we were doing this for in the first place we're doing this for fun so we're gonna do that now and play some dnd &D. how's that sound guys <coughs> yep yeah Walk i got thumbs i got all i've got all the thumbs all right so where we left off last session um we ended up seeing our party through a little bit of a, 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 mis a mystery and intrigue in the middle of the Witchlight Carnival, figure out that there's an, a portal in this carnival to another plane. And they also learned through a variety of different misadventures that the, this portal was not supposed to be known to them, that the owners of the carnival were a little bit leery of the portal. Uh, and in the end, what they were concerned about, what the owners were concerned about was... Um, the fact that they don't really have full control over the over this carnival, their home, really, uh, and so. Meanwhile, of course, all of this other stuff, all sorts of other things ensue that allow the players to determine that um, there is a deity of sorts in the realm of Prismere, which is where that portal leads to that isn't really in good shape for some reason. They have no idea why, but. They have whoever follows this deity, uh, this Zibilna or what have you, um, doesn't seem to be making contact with them anymore. And so that's part of the search as to what's going on. Anything else that you guys want to add in, in here to kind of clarify what all is going on at this point in time? 
Uh, well, we used blackmail instead of merit to get the uh, the king and queen prize. Yeah, that's right. That is right. Dottie is uh, the queen of the Witchlight Carnival, acquired not necessarily as you said through merit, but most definitely a little bit of arm twisting was involved, or maybe a lot. Depends on how you look at it. Thanks, that was my favorite part. <laughs> All right. Well, then, with that, um, as you guys got to the Hall of Illusions, which you knew is where the portal was, and Mr. Witch and Mr. Light guided you there, um, they helped you learn how to open it at will, open this portal at will. You, Many of you stepped through. The last one to step through was Dottie, who received a little bit of sneak information from Mr. Witch right before not only did the portal close, but the whole carnival got packed up as well and now there is nothing there is no extra sounds whatsoever all there is is you on a very long causeway that seems to be kind of crumbled and broken some of you have already been here before and this large expanse of swampland out in front of you um what do you guys is there let's actually show it to you let's see if i can get this up for you right now let's show what you see generally speaking Woo! all right that's not the right one hold the phone oh i don't have the right one up on the screen on the stream i will close Let my eyes that oh it's all right it was a, it was a different game there it is let's get that one <laughs> so many games so many games okay cool but this is what you guys you guys could see it uh in the players for sure and we'll get the viewers to watch the things here imminently as well and there we go how to go roll 20 you're roll you're loading fast for me today i love it okay and for the uh, people who are watching the chat, I'm going to pull up a roll call here in just a few moments. But this is what you see. So you guys also noticed as you guys came in this balloon that came that seemed off in the distance to kind of do a number of spins and spirals before it finally uh, landed off in the distance to your right, to the southish, or you what you would assume is south. What do you guys do? Okay, well, I'm going to turn to the group and say, um, I think me and Scrags can certainly start uh, us off here. We've actually started exploring ourselves. <laughs> That's right. Well, we did. Um, lead the way, then. The fun part about next is we are uh, about a hundred feet off the ground, and last time I got down, I used my spider climb trinket and put Scrags in my backpack. Unfortunately, I don't think I can carry Elred down. Well, can't you just fall down and we can cure wounds you when you get to the bottom? <laughs> That's an excellent idea. I'll fall down first. Scrags, you can fall down on top of me, and then you survive, and then bring me back. <laughs> I don't want to fall down. And what about rope? I can have we about tie a 50, rope? I have 50 feet of rope, which will only get us about halfway there. Uh, I, have I have some rope. rope. We could tie it together. Oh, Does anyone okay. have mending? I think <laughs> mending would only apply to an object that's broken, not to separate objects. Well, I'm not a wizard, so what do I know? <laughs> I mean, we could always try a knot. We, yeah, and I have yeah. pittens to place into the wall on the way down. The question is, is who's tying the knot? Because I don't know if I trust any of your knots. Uh, let me check, see how well I can do that. I can. I'm not particularly naughty, so I will leave that to Elrid. Alright, that's when I have to look something up here real quick. Why not? Are you a nautical person, Elrid? We'll catch I get. 
All right, so I'm going to hand my 50 Pass feet of there. rope to Elrid. Share on the sea. I'll hand mine over as well. All right. Yeah, I do not actually know if I'm going to be proficient in whatever this is. This but... is rope tying. <laughs> if you I'm want, sure you can... you'll be fine. You could try and, you know, just, you know, you just try. Go ahead and try. Guidance. <laughs> hey, as I, uh, while you're doing that, Scraggs, I'm going to get you to um, roll a perception check. Hang on, actually, it wasn't, not necessarily Scraggs. So uh, who is the first one through the mirror, What actually? do you want me to roll for this knot tying? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm about to get to that. Just bear with me here. But in the meantime... Uh, uh, I was like actually the first one through. Okay. okay, then I want Shimo to be the one to roll a perception check real quick first, please. Let's see. 14. Okay. Uh, okay, so with your 14, uh, you kind of look over the edge of, the, uh, of this causeway that you are on, and what you expected to see was the same swamp as you saw before, but it's not the same swamp anymore. That at the very bottom of this causeway, it seems like everything is under water. A lot of things are underwater. There's still some things peeking through, but where you expected the ground to be, there is now at least two, maybe more feet of water um, down below there that is now covering the, the swamplands, if you will. Scrags. I'm just going to say you could tie the rope, by the way, Elred. It, 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 <clears throat> there was there was a thing for that, okay. but the thing for that is has now passed. So I'm going to say you could just tie the ropes together. Also, I'm missing my rope. It's not in my inventory, so I'm just going to guess I did something with it. Well, you did, <laughs> did do you something leave with it behind? It. You did leave it behind, yes. Oh, uh, but it's... Well, I have rope. Here you go, and I'll hand Elred the rope. There you go. I've got this rope as well. Yeah. Well, I'll save mine. From the thing. Yeah. I'll save mine. So that's about 150 feet total, right? Oh, yeah, that's lots. If you tie it all together. Yeah. I'm going to hand my pittance over to Elrid. If you're going down first, could you stab these into the wall? Uh, sure. Um, yeah, I'm going to tie it together. Um, kind of do what I did before where I just, like, basically try to use, like, like a, one of my javelins as just, like, a f as, like, an anchor. You can certainly uh, try that. I don't know if I trust your javelin. I would more trust a pitten. And a hammer? What are you guys going to do? It's up to Elred if he if he uh, yeah I mean if he believes in the light of the javelin I'm not gonna say no. <laughs> um, no, that's probably... maybe maybe you can test it first just to make sure it's okay. Like you know, uh, I'll I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll use the I'll prepare cure wounds. wounds just in case. Yeah, I'll I'll use some of the pittance that someone else was offering. Uh. All right. I have donated that, ten pittens. Come, yeah, use my mace as a hammer to kind of just for sure. All right, so you can in. easily do that then, uh, comfortably get that pitten with a rope uh, tied around the end of it, ha uh, hammered into this. the The stonework on here is most definitely not the sturdiest out there, so that you're able to get the pitten in there. But it's not it's not gonna come out. It just was a little bit easier than you were perhaps expecting to get into stone this way. Yeah. Do be careful. Um there's feet of water and probably two, maybe more at the bottom. I didn't see that before when we when Scraggs and myself came through. I don't know what could be causing it. Well, we came through a different area didn't we uh that that is a good question can i uh tell the difference between where we are now and maybe where we are before 
it looks pretty much the same. Um, not with that perception check. Somebody else could look around, maybe, to perhaps to find. To see. Who's been here before. So that would probably yeah. be either Scrags or Elric, then. I'll give it a go. Ah, right. sugar. Eh. Yeah, uh, it's... You're pretty certain it's the same see. place. Oh, it is the same. Okay. Yep. You're pretty certain it's the same place. So it's changed that much in just a few hours? Sure seems like it. Ooh, this yeah. is not good. Maybe time moves yeah, different. I'll start climbing down, though. Okay. <sighs> All right. So are you guys <clears throat> climbing down now you got this rope with a pitting in? Well, Elrid's heading down. I'm oh, good, gonna, good, good. Okay. You know, see what happens. <laughs> So, Elred, hey. uh, roll me a athletics check, if you will, please. Oh, man, I should have gone down. <laughs> oh, that's fine. I got good athletics. Oh, great. Yeah, you do. You wow. Got you see him scramble down that rope as if he's been... Mind you, he is a sailor, so, you know, the guy kind of should know his way around ropes. And he he navigates that rope down very quickly and easily um, without any hassle at all. As you reach the bottom, um, Elred, your feet definitely go into uh, into water, but it's not uh, not scarily deep. It might be a little deep for Dotty, uh, but it's, uh, it's up to about midway up your calves for you. And underneath it, you can see that you feel that sticky mud squelching beneath your feet. Um, okay. Around Oof. you, you see uh, tangled mangroves growing out of pools. You can see. Um, and these large, these pools are much larger than perhaps before. Um, but you, this, there's a lot of other things that were always here before, like mm. crickets. You can hear fly, fire yeah. see from fireflies. Seems relatively comfortable was, right now. I was going to say up to whose calves? Because up to Elred's calves is like up to Dottie's chest. That's pretty <laughs> close. So yeah. you'll definitely yeah. notice this, Dottie. <laughs> I figured. <laughs> Uh, from on top of the causeway, uh, can I see where the balloon landed? Uh, I, well, the, and you did watch it go down. You can see it kind of towards some sort of a, la a tall, um, leaning structure of some sort to your right. Oh, okay. So south? Yeah. Excellent. So you kind of went around there somewhere. You can't exactly see precisely how where it went there, but... It's somewhere in that general vicinity. Okay. Uh, re before I go down, I'm going to point out to Scraggs. I think we should go that way. That seems to be where the balloon came down. Maybe our Ooh. first lead. Yeah, I think you're right. Lead on as I'm All right. like this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to head down. All right. Um, we'll go with uh, anybody who's climbing down the rope. Just roll me a quick athletics check. Mm. Then, is it going um, Shimo is, and then Scrags and then Dottie? Or is Dottie going down before Scrags is? Um, I'll probably go last. Dottie's timid about the height of the water. Okay. I'm going to say a prayer before I go down and give myself some guidance because I'm going to need with this. That, all right. Ooh. With that prayer. Um, something about this particular space for you, it feels almost like home, with, but and yet you know you're so far away. But, but, oh, hey, fey creatures. And yet, and yet. Why does it feel like home? <gasps> Am I a fairy? All right. No, I ain't that fairies. Thing. Okay. Can I use my Tides of Chaos? Oh, uh, to get that stuff. I want to see that. Um, let's see here. I'm glad I'm already down the rope. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so this is kind of risky, but... That's all right. It's not letting me post it, but I can copy-paste it. Okay, that's fine. Uh, first level of... The, 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 you can okay, do advantage. Okay. A long rest... You haven't used this yet, so any time before you regain use of the DM can after cast for you. Okay, that makes so that makes sense. Okay, so yeah, 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 you could totally do that. So you can okay. 
using your Tides of Chaos to gain advantage on this. Sweet. Here we go. All right. Ooh. You needed that. Yeah. Except it was the first roll anyway, so it wouldn't make a difference. Okay, so um, Dottie, as you uh, grip the rope and kind of check its uh, st uh, strength against the pit, and, um, you start making your way down. And as you get closer and closer to the water and swamp itself, something feels right. Something feels like you're going to get some, something just feels like there's going to be some form of success here. You feel like something is that you've been missing. You, ever, you know that feeling you get when you just haven't, you know, something's been gone for a while and you only just realized it and you're like, what the heck was that thing? I'm going to find it here. Whatever it is, I'm going to find it here. Hmm. Unless you shoot a fireball at yourself. <laughs> That's very possible. <laughs> very, very definitely possible. But you all make it your way down. Just at the very end of the rope, dotty, your hands kind of slip underneath the moisture and you get down to the bottom and you splash into the water. The water is not... Elrond, how tall are you actually? Uh, I think like six and a half feet. Okay, so tall six and a half. Little thing. And Dottie, you're in the neighborhood of three some odd feet, right? Yep. So it's actually coming up to your waist. Okay, that's not too bad. No, not so. Um, and you see all the same thing. In fact, as you kind of look up, you can see a large bird-like creature kind of floating around in the sky. A good, probably a good mile away, not at you right now, but um, just kind of doing lazy circles in the sky right now. Gonna try to shake the swamp water off and go. Ew. But shaking it off was probably uh, futile when you were standing in it. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen how tall I am? No, let me look around. I can't quite tell. Oof. So, where would we be now in relation to this map? Like uh, well, and and to be clear, oh, the map side. that you see here is, um, it's very cartoony for a reason. None of the none of the locations that you see here are, um, uh, they're not proportionate. Uh, certain, oh. Yeah, nothing here is proportionate. It just kind of is giving you some general ideas as to some landmarky type things that you can see. You're kind of closer to where Shimo is, um, at the okay. moment. Um, so what's what's this kind of we can see this in the distance and we can that, see also the balloon that is a perception check because there is still mist and fog all around you <clears throat> I shall pray now again that you're down here you could do it I shall pray again once more to my deity for guidance and I will do ooh 24 Oh, not bad. Not bad at all. You do, and actually, as you kind of, as you are waking, uh, getting yourself down to the bottom, uh, it, you're kind of looking to see all the way around this new land, very kind of dark. Everything's got this strange green tinge to everything. Looking, trying to th see through the mist, you do see um, uh, off in the de that distance that large bird-like creature is. That is a not a small <coughs> creature. That is like a pterosaur kind of sized creature. Um, but you do also see kind of along where the causeway would have gone to the north, you do see some so, some sort of uh, tower-like structure out in through the mist, just barely. And if you blink, it's gone kind of thing. You can also see that large uh, leaning tower to your south. You don't see a lot that's around the ground level. You can only see the things that are a little bit above ground level. And mm. so really what you are seeing, there is a, a large... Um, mountain off, uh, kind of pe mountain peak off to your south as well, more southeast-ish. Um, that's pretty close to what you see, but it, the most visible thing at the moment, because it's the one that you guys have been paying attention to the most, happens to be that leaning tower. I'll turn to Shimo and I'll say, uh, Shimo, is, is that small or is it far away? And I'll be pointing up at the giant bird. Oh, do I see it as well? 
you do see it, and it seems like it's a distance off. It's certainly not uh, doing its lazy circles towards you by any stretch. It seems to be looking someplace further away from you. At the moment, anyway. Hmm. It seems to be far <coughs> away. Its, its size is it's scary. I, it's not a small uh, yeah. creature, as far as I can tell. I was scared that you'd say that. Well, um, maybe we should kind of hide. I think that's a good idea. Uh, where are we and going? I kind of, I, I'm going to like uh, crouch down to get to like <coughs> Sam's height and point south towards that tower. Towards the tower or towards the balloon? Well, the balloon is near the tower. I think if we go towards it, we should see it on the way. Oh, uh, big man, what do you think? Uh, uh, like he's, I mean, it's on the way. Let's check it out. Like, I mean, <clears throat> the tower, obviously, that seems important. And but, your majesty. What shall your Aww. three servants do? <laughs> I'll just go towards the tower. And she's like trying to wade through swamp water. <laughs> yeah, and everything is difficult terrain at this point. <clears throat> anyway. Ouch. Okay. Is that difficult Excellent. terrain for everyone? It is. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, okay. Unless you have some sort of swimming speed. Maybe, as a redacted, I do. <laughs> I do not have a swimming speed. Uh, then, yeah, then it is, uh, it is <coughs> definitely difficult to read. Uh, I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm a little bit tired. I kind of like need a nap at some stage. It would be difficult to make camp here. Uh, mm. I can set a lot of fires, but not underwater. Should we search for dry ground? Maybe. I think that's an excellent idea. If we'll see what we can see on the way. Uh, <clears throat> All right. Then who's doing the search for the for the high ground? Uh, what stat would that be? A perception? Uh, it would be a likely a uh, survival check of some sort. Okay. Uh, I'll pass. The, does it? Does anyone uh, a survivalist in the group? <laughs> I have a plus two to this. It's not great, but not uh, bad. I can I, try. Nah. Uh, not great. I'm a a three survivalist. <laughs> Tell you what, uh, you can either have two of you do it, or you can have one of you do it with advantage because you guys are all kind of looking together. So you do have help. Oh Shimo please. Mighty goddess, help us. I'll help Scrags. Okay, Scrags, okay. go for it. Roll okay. with advantage. I am obviously going to do um, a survival. I'm going. Oh, with guidance. Good thing you got that I'm advantage. Praying. Yeah, I'm praying. Oh, 17. There. Nice. Yeah, okay. So as you kind of look out towards the land a little bit, uh, towards what you remember when those hit. Uh, those, pardon me, rabbit folk were kicking around. Mm. You do see uh, that there is kind of a little bit of a lift to the vegetation uh, in one particular direction, kind of east, southeast kind of a, a direction. Uh, and so you presume that if the vegetation is lifting, maybe the ground underneath it is probably raising up a little bit there too. Okay. I'll point it out to the rest of the group. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, how about why don't I go slightly ahead? Uh, as a wood elf, I can hide cleanly in even the lightest of brush or uh, phenomena. Mm. For sure. Makes All right. Sense. So Shimo leading the way. I need to know your uh, marching order, if you would please. I'll, Shimo. Go <laughs> I'll go after Shimo. 
Okay. All right. I'll go third then. And Scrag's pulling up the rear then. Scrag's yeah. our valiant leader from the <clears> rear. <throat> I'm leading from the rear. Keep going. All right. Excellent. So, and uh, then if that's the case, Shima, I want you to roll perception check while we're going. Twelve. Okay. 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 So as you start making your way in that general direction that Scrag's kind of pointed, Scrag's kind of trying to uh, correct your path a little bit if you kind of fall off because it's not hard with all the mist and the excess water that's around um, because there's so few defining features. So Scrag's kind of keeps on uh, directing you a little bit, but at, you're paying less attention to where you're going. You're paying attention to looking out for those uh, those creatures that were mar marching through with their interesting song last time you were here. Yeah. And... Thankfully, you don't see... Well, wait a second. There are shadows there. Oh, Those are no. definitely humanoid shadows coming your way. Ah, and then maybe uh, not your way. You know, maybe they're coming a little off. Everyone, duck down. There's All shadows right. up ahead. Roll stealth check, everybody. Uh, I'm nervous. If I duck down any further, I'll drown. <laughs> <laughs> Same. She, Scrags, assist me in something. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm kind of screwed as well. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. Dottie, you have no problem. You just kind of duck down. You get your chin right, right up against the water. No oh, problem. God. <laughs> you guys are under heavy armor. I, I'm just going to say. Um, okay. Medium. Um, medium. Okay, yours is, yours was at disadvantage because of your heavy armor. So what's go So you... I have medium armor, there. but it's, it's the same disadvantage. Okay, okay, okay. Fair enough. Um, Dottie has <clears throat> got no problem. Uh, Shimo, you're like, whoosh, as your foot kind of, as you reach your hand out to say, everybody, get quiet. And, yeah. Whatever <laughs> stealth you thought you would have had, you would have been you're like, ah, oh, crap, that was totally me. And then immediately afterwards, Alred almost kind of missteps, and Scrag's right behind him. Just You could hear whoosh, whoosh, kind of coming through the water as you're going through there. So, as you are there, you kind of freeze in spot. These creatures don't seem to pause at all. They keep on walking. They're not walking directly at you. They're kind of walking past you-ish. And as you get, as they get a little bit closer, you can see um, these strange... They almost like quadrupedal. They're not bipeds. Or are they? They've got these long stilts coming off their front hands arms that they're using to try to, ha to to actually traverse through this water fairly well and but they're also very tall elred tall creatures and, and relatively buff there's about six of them they're seeming to just kind of pass by you as you get closer you can see the, the furs that they're wearing patchwork over top of them um kind of this beading beaded net over their heads um and now that you can also make out that they've got baskets or nets or cages or something like that tied to their back i surrender uh, did, don't hurt me do they appear to be armed in the, in any way um much beyond the stilts not really and they don't seem to be paying too too much attention to you. I why don't we just let them pass? There's no reason to engage. Yeah, yeah let's just let them pass. Let's see here, I'm gonna try and think who would actually have this one. Actually, all of you guys could. So I'm gonna just give it to you. As they kind of get closer, they're about thirty feet away from you, paying you no attention. Um, not even so much as to give you a greeting or a, a recognition that you're there. You recognize, though, as the beads get a little, as they get closer, they have that beaded netting across their faces. These are hobgoblins. <gasps> and they're just oh, walking no. by. I'm just standing still. Hmm. They seem to be guys... paying us no mind, but. To the to what I know, hobgoblins are fairly aggressive. It's quite odd. <clears throat> uh, uh, I think if you move, they can see you. So don't move. Just <laughs> completely still. I freeze in place. 
I have no reason not to believe Scraggs. <laughs> Does anybody have any reason not to believe Scraggs? Yeah, I think the only person. Has... <laughs> okay, so Elred, if you've got reasons to not believe Scrag, you can you can go ahead and make a perception I, check yeah, of your own. I, okay. <laughs> like, or I'm history. Still not gonna, I'm still probably not going to move just because, like, there's no <laughs> reason to. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, history. So you've heard strange stories about um, creatures that only have movement acuity in their vision, but you thought they were all dinosaurs, and immediately that's when you realize, okay, maybe I should look up to that that bird in the sky again, and it seems to be doing lazy circles off elsewhere again. Is there anything in the cages that are on their back? There are. There are what seems to be either really well-shaped round rocks or eggs. All a variety of different colors. Oh, no. Did they... Did, did they take those eggs? The... Okay, get out of here. Get out of here. Move, 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 move. That creature's gonna come for us. Oh, that's... Uh, that's uh, smart. Uh, uh, right, quick, quick, quick. If we don't move... They can't see us. So let's get out of here by not moving. Quick, quick. All right, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna broke stay my brain. like... I'm gonna broke stay the DM's perfect. brain. <laughs> I don't know. I'm Just, stay, what do we do? I'm gonna stay perfectly in that frozen position, but also roll backwards. All right. I have to try to figure out how you roll for rolling. Okay, guy. um... Mm -hmm. Uh, acrobatics. Oh, yeah, acrobatics. There's remember there's six of these bugbears kind of, and they're all they're oh, basically walking past you at this point. Or not bugbears, sorry, hog, hobgoblins, and they're mm. basically walking past you at this point. Uh, 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 as soon as they get past us, let's just run. Yeah. Past uh, them do we want to say hello? I mean, if they're not angry, maybe say hello. Figure out what's going on. I have the diplomacy of a broken record. If someone else would like to try. I got this. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> I have good charisma. Your persuasion right. is probably better than mine. All right. Dottie, lead the way. <laughs> I mean, Elroy doesn't need persuasion. So, He's big. I'll come out of my hiding spot and try to make myself a little bit more noticeable to the hobgoblins. And then... I'll say, um, hello, good afternoon. I don't know what time it is. <laughs> and then um, I'll just say, uh, what are you guys doing exactly? Um, uh, one of the hobgoblins. Uh, well, well, let's see here. Let's see here what the hobgoblins do. I like my dice to tell me things because there's so many options available. Oh, yeah. Okay, so... Um, yeah, the one in the back, because they're now almost past you, um, is, the one in the back is actually is probably the closest. And he just kind of pauses with a stilts. Looks over at you. Just... What? Uh, hello? We're walking. You're walking? Well, Where are you walking, walking to? Um, downfall. Can I see where he's pointing, or is it too misty? It's he's pointing just kind of this general northwestish direction. Oh, gotcha. This is a hand is, and you know he's lifting his whole stilt up, so like the whole stilt for the point is kind of doing this. Huh. And I'll say, huh. It's not very specific. What do you have on your back? Well, these these are our eggs. Take them to downfall to sell them. Oh, okay. Do you know you what type of eggs they are? Sure, I'll or... take one. All right. What do you got? Um, I want to see if I can. I uh, I'll give you. How's five copper? Five copper. Well, I don't know. 
Hey, Bleak! One of the other hobgoblins near the front kind of stop, kind of turn over. What's a copper? <laughs> he can kind hear of comes back around. smiling. The other ones kind of come back Ooh. around. Copper. I don't know. I think it's coin. Oh, five? Yeah. Five copper. And, he kind of and it's really just, shiny. He kind of pulls one of his uh, uh, his um, stilts off of his hand and, and reaches around, call it, lifts off the... Okay, five copper. Oh, you have... And hair just kind of opens up the cage and pulls out a fairly large egg um, and then just kind of passes it over to you. It's almost identical in color to yours, except it's got some blue spot uh, to your hair, except it's got some blue spots on it as well. Huh. This is quite fascinating. And he kind of takes the copper from your hands. Oh ho! And then closes up the cage and do you have copper? Kind of points, uh, looks over at Scrags. He he smiles. Uh, yeah, I got lots of copper. I, I, I've even got something called gold. What's, it's like what's magic copper. Roll a persuasion check on that one. Deception. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Persuasion. Ugh. Oh, well, I was doing it at a disadvantage, so yeah, 21. Yeah, yeah, 21, okay. <clears throat> so, it kind of kind of was about to put his uh, cage back on his back and... Ma ma magic. What? Okay, show me. I'll take out a gold coin, and I'll hold... There is sunlight here, is there? It's low lightish. I mean, it it's swamp light, really. When it comes right down to it, the light isn't able to penetrate the mist deeply, so everything's got that really lovely green tinge to it. But that's um. But there I can't is enough make light a glint. I can try to make a glint. Maybe? You can see, you can see mm, with a persuasion have... check. I'm going to give you this that you can see that there's some fireflies, and you try to just kind of capture the fireflies' bioluminescence in the coin just a little bit. Mm. Oh, shiny. Okay, uh, and he looks really closely at you, Scrags. Okay, okay, <laughs> a green one. Mm, well, um, let's say a green one and some information. And yeah, now the the other one, which you now know is named Bleak. Um, looks. What information are you gonna want? Uh, well, I have a few questions. I mean, I'll give you two of these shiny golden coins, magical. If you answer all our questions, just a few minutes of your time, gentlemen. No egg. And an egg. One egg. Some questions, okay. and you get okay. two. He passes over the the egg, and I'll give him two gold. Okay, Bleak takes the gold this time. Puts the right, the what questions do we have? Um, what is the uh, the town you're going to? We're we're going to Downfall. Uh, Downfall's got lots of those. Um, what are they called? Uh, what are they? Called? Bleak says. Bullywogs. Right, right, right. Bullywogs. Uh, and and that is also where uh, Slackjaw lives, too. Slackjaw sounds like an intelligent fellow. We might be able to get uh, a bit of information out of him as well. Bleak kind of leans forward into you a little bit and says, Not fellow. More toad than... And certainly not fellow. More girl, but toad girl. A girl toad? Sort of. Bavlorna is her actual name, not Slackjaw. 
She sounds beautiful. Is she's... she red? No, no. She she made this and just kind of gestures with his stilts to everything. <laughs> well, I generally fear giant toads. They remind me of the slod. Well, if you if you follow the rules, she's not all that bad. If you don't follow the rules, she's not great. What kind of eggs are these? Well, that one, the one, and points with his stilt right at Dottie, the stilt kind of comes like this close to your head. That one there, I think that one was like some feathered thing. But the one that you got there, that's a Tyrannus, no, Pterosaur. Hey, uh, what's the one that's up there? Uh, in, in, in his cage? No, no, up there, what's that thing flying? Very oh. big thing, far away. Yeah, that's Mama. Uh, should I be scared? Should we be scared? Does it attack? No, not that way. I'll kind of whisper, Alred, are these guys all there? I mean, they seem to be missing, like, their brains. That, oh, yeah. Is that if they just aren't very bright? <laughs> Could we take advantage it's, of them? <laughs> it's goblins, you know. Uh, I should not have said that to you. <laughs> Kind of give him a little thump on the back of the head. No, just, why? Just smack him. What? Sorry, Elmer, say that again. So I'm just gonna give him a little thump upside the back of the head, just like. Just Don't him. ask a paladin to take advantage of people. I forgot. Are we taking advantage of people? And by the way, these hobgoblins no. are. Are not hearing any conversation you're saying. So the one that you first approached, Dottie, uh, goes up to you. Is that all your questions? No. Um. What's what's the, the this big tower thingy over there? What's that? So and you're pointing to the one to the south. Yeah. Oh, that one. Slanty tower. <laughs> oh. <laughs> And who lives Just in the slanty me. tower? Oh. Bugs, snakes, spiders. Oh no. There's not lots there. It's just a. And then Bleak kind of steps, uh, kind of speaks up. Slanty tower. Huh? Uh, slanty tower. Tower that slants. Are these eggs from that bird? And I point up to the sky. Oh, just just that one. He points to the uh, egg that uh, Scraggs is carrying now. Ah, oh, sh no! Oh, I'll hide it under my cloak. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, I doesn't know. And it probably won't find out for... Well, it's almost light. So maybe soon. Couple hours. <laughs> you know... I'm feeling pretty generous. I'm gonna give you my egg back. But you can keep the copper. Why, that's not how it works here. And you can actually see some genuine discomfort in his eyes. Oh, yeah. Keep Thank the you, egg. Sky, I can for the host. It. Okay. I'll cut it back up and say, no offense meant, of course. Oh, you must. <laughs> And this is when Bleak kind of steps. Uh, kind of steps. You're new here, aren't you? Well, obviously. There's some rules you should kind of know about here in Prismere. Uh, one of them is it's called reciprocity. Uh, what's given must have like given in return. So, either. If you give us the egg back, then we got to give you something else, and that's 
we don't want to do that because we still have to take these to downfall. Oh, I see. But there's I think would make a love. I think the eggs would make a lovely dinner. I don't mind holding on to them. That they do. Uh, are there any other rules that we should know about? Uh, oh yeah, uh, the rule of ownership. Uh, don't steal, basically, uh, mm. unless it's for Bavlorna. But Bavlorna Ooh. kind of owns everything, or anyway, I think. Mm. And then uh, the the last rule, uh, which the DM is quickly sweet, sweet uh, because he's had a brain fart going all the way back to in his book. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, hospitality. If you go to Slanty Tower and somebody lives there, they have to be nice to you when you first meet, unless you're a jerk. <laughs> Mm, that could be useful. Mm. Let's get to know. So, well, he said so, unless you're a jerk, so we might be out of luck. Uh, uh, question. You should if, we was, I'm if, we nice. was, if we was to bump into people like you, they have to be nice to us first. That's the theory. If... If they're working, oh. like if they're a lordling, then they might be working for I'm um, for oh, for Bavlorna, and if there's any reason Bavlorna thinks that you've been mean to Hither, then she may send you to Thither or something worse. Hither, Thither, oh Hither. god. Oh, uh, Hith you're in there. Lifts his stilt up to kind of scratch his jaw just a little bit. He's got this great big stick as he's scratching his jaw. Huh. Excellent information. Uh, our new uh, new camp idea. What about the tower? If someone's there, they have to be nice to us. It's like a bed and breakfast. <laughs> the hobgoblins sure. are kind of looking to each other. But, uh, yeah. question, what what's, the, what's what? Oh, go on, sorry. No, you said a bed and breakfast? Yeah, like, you stay at someone's place and they have to give you breakfast. Oh, like the inn at the end of the road. Ah. Oh, there's an inn. Sometimes. Hmm. What, huh. what what's the mountain over there? Oh, over all the way. That's Telami Hill. Hmm. Do you have any advice about where we should go if we want to, like, uh, I don't know, survive? Oh. Hmm. <laughs> okay, so Sky Guy just threw this in the chat. Air D and D. I love that so much. Okay, 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 okay. All right. So um, the you're asking for uh, for. He says, "Well, everybody kind of does their own thing." Do you like water? It's not. Um, uh, maybe. I mean, I bathe once a year. That. Uh, Me too. I feel a special connection with you. <laughs> we could be bathroom buddies. And you get there. You're there oh, now, ch kind of chattering between each other and Goblin. And so, if you can understand Goblin, I think we gotta go. It's time to move on. Oh, fine. These are, these are funny. <laughs> <laughs> they make weird words like beds and breakfasts. You guys should open a bed and breakfast. You'd be good at it. Yeah. Uh, do we have a lot of food? Does everyone have food? I've got food, but uh, I'm in the mood for eggs. Uh, how about if we buy another few of your eggs? Uh, sure. Uh, we'll I... give you coins for some of your eggs. 
Well, I can see that. Uh, sure. How much coin? Uh, how many eggs you got? Well, I've got a few. And I kind of start kind of, and I'm gonna get somebody to roll for me a uh, go three d six, if you will, please. Oh, that sounds like fun. Can I do it? Yeah, do it. <laughs> yeah, 12. so there's 12 eggs between the six uh, hobgoblins left. So the one that you first met, he's emptied out his cage, <clears throat> but there's 12 eggs between the rest of them that they're willing to part with. Should, uh, should we buy him? Four oh, eggs would Dak, give us... I wish. Uh, four Sorry, eggs man. would give us a lovely evening. Maybe. I mean... They only cost a copper each. I mean, that's pretty cheap. <laughs> All right. I, I got lots well, of copper. Uh, Dottie do you kind have, of flooded the market with five copper. Do Do mm. you have? And they're they're kind of leaning into. You, do you Do you have other coins? Yes, I've got I some silver. Oh, what's a silver look like? Uh. It's. I'll just pull one out. Yeah. And he looks over at never... at Elred's coin and just like, and the, and one of the other couples. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, that's the one. <laughs> Can I produce a small flame to make it glisten? Oh yeah, you could totally do that. I definitely produce flame. All right. So it glints a little bit more, uh, and it reflects the subscription we just got from uh, Dutch Dungeon. So thank you very much. But it also reflects a little bit more in the silver coin towards um, towards the hog lines. It's like, oh, and they go. Like, uh, Bleak reaches out for it, and yeah, a couple others are just all ready. Just they're just pulling out their eggs. They're all really excited about the silver. Yeah, no, I'm putting mine away though. I'm not. And they just put, um... they just gave you all four eggs. I, I, I'll, I'll buy the rest of your eggs, right? I have this special stuff. It's special stuff in a bottle. And I'll pull out a little bottle. Uh, bottles filled with colored liquid. Okay. Which I happen to have. I have ten of them. Alrighty then. So they're all different and colors, and like and yellow, pink, liquor. blue, purple. Okay. Um, okay, so Bleak's going to lean and says, oh, colorful liquid. Not sure that's for us. Roll persuasion check. Uh, okay. Uh. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Um, I, I don't really think that one's for us. But yeah. you've got four eggs. We got the shiny silver thing. Um, right. I we gotta get to downfall. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be rude. We just it, there's the right time to move. I'll start speaking in goblin and telling them thank you very much. And um, we shall. Uh, which direction is the is the town that they're going to? Oh, they'll, he'll point again with his stilt out to the northwest. And how far is it from here? Oh, a while. Okay. Um, Thank you for your time, gentlemen. And they Twas a pleasure. For the pretties. And they just kind of... <laughs> you guys are as beautiful as you are breakfast. smart. Bed and breakfast. So, how are you carrying these eggs? Yeah, uh, I guess I'll just hold one. I'm hiding really well. I'm hiding mine underneath my uh, cloak. Okay. I'm not assisting in the egg carrying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, I'll so, carry the four of them, I, I suppose. Make, There's I six eggs. You guys got the first two, and then yeah. you got four more. Yeah, I'll carry the four that we just got, so I'll have five. Okay. Is that bad? <laughs> Where you, like you're trying to carry them in your arms because these like, um, they're not small eggs. These are like I mean, we have backpacks, turkey-sized eggs. 
if and bigger. Um, I'll put would them my in my backpack. backpack. For it? Uh, backpack would have a room for a few of a couple of them anyway. Okay, I'll carry yeah, I mean, three. I'll put two in my backpack. All right. I'll just keep the one I have. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, then. So now that we know where all these eggs are, there's. <laughs> this is a, this oh, is a no. potential thing. All right. So, uh, let's uh, carry on. Which direction are you go- guys going now? Towards the tower. Yeah. All right. All right. And as you start making your way towards the tower, you can notice now that the water level is starting to reduce. It's getting lower and lower, little bits at a time, until you can actually see the ground again. And that that rough terrain or that difficult terrain that w- of, of squelching and your foot sinking into the mud and you having to yank it out like glue again, all of that is now um, a little bit less of an issue. The, wa- the ground is still ex- ex- extremely moist and you still sink in quite a bit, but you don't have to push your way through water anymore. Mm. Okay. And over the course of a, a little bit of time, we're going to see couple of hours you can actually start to see a little bit more of a blue glow in the sky as well and start to know like is this is nighttime no nah, this is it really nighttime and if somebody wants to actually kind of determine what's going on here you guys can do <coughs> a nature check to determine what is my nature Ooh, uh, I'm good at this. Bad. one <laughs> i got this one maybe yeah. okay maybe not let's take a look 12 <laughs> 12 so, the, okay. uh, like, 10 is kind of the average person. So 12 is kind of a relatively logical average person, we'll say. Uh, and so in this logic, both of you are able to kind of sense there is some sort of light source up in the sky through the mist that you can't see very well. But this light mm-hmm. source is not your standard uh, Olivon light source. It's not like you like all of us where you're from, where the light source is very much a bright yellow color. This one seems to be more of a... Uh, shade of blue that's going across mm-hmm. the sky, that's kind of lifting up into the sky instead it's obviously a sun but this is problematic perhaps for shimo most but shimo hasn't made the role so i'm not going to tell you anything else beyond that so i i do <laughs> not sense the love of yun lil only uh, the you, curse <laughs> you do actually if you're gonna actually put your thoughts out to that role of religion check Yay, I can do that. Uh, 19. Oh, nice. You feel Yun Lil is here. Yun Lil is here, there's no question about it. But Yun Lil feels uh, a little bit colder than usual. Like a little bit mm. more. Yun Lil usually brings the uh, light and joy and happiness to everybody. Uh, and for those of you who are watching, the game is currently set in the realm of, well, sort of, set in the realm of Olivos, where Yunlil is the god of the sun. Uh, or goddess of the sun, I should say. However, uh, of course, they're not in Olivos right now. They're in a different realm altogether. They're in Prismir. And so they're see- you're noticing this new light in the sky. And she feels cold to you. Almost... I'm definitely going to offer Yunlil a prayer. All right. Okay, cool, cool. So after a period of time, uh, you guys do make your way towards it, and you can start to see this tower kind of uh, more than just a silhouette through the mist is starting to kind of appear to you um, as a crumbling tower that rises well above the swamp. Um, It's leaning at kind of this odd angle that makes you feel like if even just the slight... If a firefly were to land on the side of it, maybe it would fall over. Um... Hanging, there are crenellations near the top of the tower, and hanging from these crenellations, there's a sort of balloon basket. Hmm. And it's about 30 feet above the surface of the swamp at this point in time as you approach this tower. Interesting. Is the balloon basket empty or is someone stuck up there? <clears throat> mm, you'd have to roll a perception check to find out for sure. Can do. Would you like me to bless you? Okay. Yes. Uh, rolled it too soon. Rolled it too soon. Can't do the bless. Um, so, 
Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so it's because of the angle that you're at, it's difficult to tell what's going on with this, except for to see that there's a basket hanging from the from the top of this um, tower. Uh, so if there is anything inside, you don't know from the distance that you're at right now. You'd have to get closer to maybe, and maybe even up there to find out for sure. Uh, Elred, you're pretty strong, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, how far do you think you can throw something? Pretty, pretty far. Depends on the thing, obviously. Right. Your Majesty, you volunteered. Thrower. Up to the basket. Oh, go, 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 go. Oh. Well, I'm in armor. You can't throw me. She's not wearing anything. I'm um, definitely going to scoop up Scrags and throw him towards the basket. No! <laughs> Athletic check. I want to see how far you can throw Scrags. <laughs> 15. 15. Okay. You throw him a good distance, but um, not very far. You throw him a... You, get a good, you do get a good five feet of throw on him. Um, so he... Yeah, and Scrags, you're like... <laughs> and are gone. And as you land, do you... Yeah, well, let's have some fun with this. Go ahead and give me a dexterity saving throw. I want to see uh, how much you get. Oh, I'm not good at dex. Um, <laughs> can I? <laughs> Chalk, save me! Oh. That's the first and... time that I hear my deity. <laughs> That's true. That is very true. And if anybody wants to throw out a uh, religion check to kind of make connections, <coughs> you certainly can. But as you go, your body kind of goes horizontal, and so you land with an absolute splat on your back in the ground. Dottie, you do recognize the name Chalk immediately <coughs> um, as kind of this trickster god or lesser, lesser deity trickster god um, that is most well known in the principality of Fuencia um, for basically being very creative with thievery. Hmm. I'll make a mental More like, note myself yeah. to ask Scrags think, about it, but okay, think think not so much like petty thievery, more like white collar um, stuff. Huh. Okay. Yeah, I'll um, make a mental note to myself to ask Scrags about it later, but I won't say anything. All right. So do okay. I... What, what effect does this throw have on me? You are flat on your back, prone, and very mucky. I'm gonna go help uh, help him up. And as you do that, you hear that... Hey, you. I, I need help. Yes, so what help can I help you with? <laughs> I'm in mean, a, a, a bit of a bind. <laughs> How much will he give us? Uh, where's this voice coming from? <coughs> voice, and because Elra is the first one to ask, the voice is coming from the balloon, the basket, something up high. Okay. Hmm. I'll have to check my... Okay, so, um, oh, see, I, Sir Talavar, as one of the Summer Queen's loyal servants, I ask that you free me. I was in the midst of, of a daring escape from, from the vile Bevelorda Blightstraw, and when a balloon caught an ill wind and flew amok, I was sent plummeting to well, wherever I am now, and my pilot, the humble and noble uh, Wigglewog, did not survive. I've been trapped up here for a little bit. I, I, please help me down. I, I must tell my queen of the results of Prismere. Uh, oh, do you think you'd be able to catch him? <laughs> Uh, 
Do I sense this guy's check? being truthful? <laughs> you can roll an inside check if you want. Yeah. So, well, I trust him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. He's uh, Elred, you totally believe everything this guy is saying. Something is vile about Valvlorna. He, you, you saw the balloon. You knew it went weird. Um, everything totally makes sense. Um, Dottie, you get the sense that... Um, you get the sense of nobility and the kind of nobility that really has no idea what they're doing. But aside from that, it feels like he's saying saying truth. I mean, Elred, do you think you'd be able to catch them? Yeah. Okay, well, stand under the balloon. And can I snip the line of the balloon with a tiny little flame? Uh, you would certainly, you could certainly try. That's going to be a high DC. It's like, it's 30 feet up there, first of all. And you're looking to snip just the right line because there's a whole bunch of lines that hold this basket to the balloon itself. Balloon draped over one of the crenellations basket on the other side. And if something untoward happens, you might just set the whole balloon ablaze or even the basket. Oh, that's not good. Uh, maybe maybe fire is not a very uh, good yeah, health and safety. Of... Um <laughs> so you're but you're standing underneath the basket right now? Uh yeah. Alright. If that maybe is I the have case, a tool. Do you, uh you're amongst you to start with darts, right? <laughs> I'm gonna uh, get uh Shimo to roll hmm. a quick perception check too, by the way. Okay. I could chose a quarterstaff. Could we just throw him up a rope or something? I have some daggers. I could cut them out. I like the sound of that. Shh, 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 shh. You hear from the basket. And as you also hear that from the basket, you also hear from around the, co from around the side of the tower. This kind of rattling sound. Mm. That's not good. Can I hit the deck? You certainly can try. Is that what you like? You're just gonna go into this into the muck. Yes. All right. And as you do, a snake launches out at you. Oh boy. I'm Oof. gonna. This is. I'm not gonna roll initiative on this. I just want to see what you guys do for responses. You see a little snake launch out towards Shimo, uh, but Shimo ducks. The, the snake makes a miss. What do you guys do? I just want to. Try to snatch it by like the neck. Sure, go for a grapple check with. Um, uh, this would be. Oh, well, this this if this is how you're gonna go, then go for the <clears> athletics <throat> check because this isn't a really or sorry uh, an acrobatics check. This isn't really a strength uh, thing. This is can you actually get this thing fast enough? Oh yeah. So you <laughs> see the snake and just like as a re as a reflex, <laughs> you gra you grapple it. And very quickly afterwards, another one reaches out, uh, uh, kind of slithers up and, and attacks at Elred. You've got the one in your hand, yeah. but another one is, is launching at Elred, too. Can I hit it with a produce flame? You can certainly try. Roll your attack. Yes. I Same, will. isn't it? Oop. 23. <laughs> Holy jeez. Yeah. That's that'll make a difference. Just give me one second as I look one thing up here real quick. I want to see how badly you damage this thing. Um, Twelve fire? Oh no, it's no, okay. it's five. Five. Yeah. Uh, where Which are, is where a D eight, I think. Oh uh, yeah. Scrags is speaking in some foreign language. <laughs> uh, M N E B H K. Yeah, no, we actually have to roll initiative for this, guys. We're going to do this right now. <laughs> Let's roll uh, some no. initiative. Don't. Before or after I hit? Uh, this will be uh, you'll. This will be your first round. I'll, so it'll be before before we get everybody in it now, because this was all just like basically reactions. Okay. Oh wait, let me click on my token. So. And so we'll actually yeah. let your we'll let your hit hit, and then we'll carry on with it from there. All right, all right. Oh, perfect. I go first oh, anyway. <laughs> nice. 
I got some All good right. initiative here. Yeah, yeah. I gotta keep track of these things here. I'm gonna keep track of these things. On my things. All right, let's do this. And this one's that. Okay, cool, 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 cool. No, it's not. That was the wrong number. Okay, so this is all theater of the mind that we're going with here, guys. I don't want to have to worry about pulling up a swamp map just for this. So, um, let's see here. Initiatives. Okay. Oh, there's so many things on here. Hang on a second. Apparently, I didn't clear this like I should have. Um, I'll put everybody back in directly. It'll be easier if I do it that way, honestly. Sorry, guys. Uh, I did... Oh, there it is, Kate. So, we're going to start with um, Shimo. And 24. then the next one is Donnie. Elred 18. Oh, Donnie. Elred. <clears throat> and... I'm checking to make sure the eggs aren't broken. All right. All right, so here we go. Shimo, 24. Dottie, 21. I was supposed to be ever confirmed those were bird eggs. Come on. I haven't confirmed anything yet. There we go. I've confirmed mm. they're delicious. <laughs> <laughs> we can use them for that bed and breakfast. There we go. Exactly. Okay. Burning. So you have two very large snakes. Albert's got oh. his grip on one of them. And Chimo's just kind of lit it. It hit, but it was only like a small scorch on this very large snake. Shima, what you gonna do? I'm definitely gonna roll forward and karate chop it in half if that can happen. Oh, you're gonna try. Roll your attack. I'm going to try. Uh, let me move the turn order so I can do so. For sure, for sure, for sure. Ten. And uh, oh, we got you guys off the map on the on the show here too. Let's let's pull you guys up there. There we go. That's a little bit nicer. Okay, so you guys are actually all over here by Slanty Tower now. So there we go. So a ten does not hit. Can I bonus action another unarmed strike? You can. Yeah, you certainly can. That critical hit is much better. Let's get that nat twenty bonus thing up there. So eleven points of damage then. Yes. That's pretty awesome right there. Um, and that was the one that you produced, uh, that you flamed as, as well. So uh, it, like you feel it smack, but this snake has some serious girth to it. And when you try to smack it, it you realize, wow, there's a lot of flesh to get through on this thing. Oh, geez. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, that's all she wrote. That's what I got. That's what we got. All right, that brings us to Dottie then. <laughs> okay. Um. So, uh, Dottie, I don't think likes uh, snakes very much. So we're gonna go overboard with this. Um, can I cast a uh, Burning Hands? <laughs> yeah, you can. What's that? <laughs> well, I I'm holding one of them. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but they're big. They're yeah, big, they're big, they're big. One. So. Okay, you're just hitting the other one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a DC 14. I'm just wondering well, right. with how close they are to me, if it's possible to not hit them both. Oh, that's lame. <clears throat> Three D6, okay. and I got a four. Oh, that's right. Oh, wow. That's. Oh, okay. Let's see what they do. Uh, I'll still take half. They'll take two. Okay, you're good. that's that's that that that's a very big fail on one of them because I shouldn't have this at advantage. It's only the first roll on this one. So here comes the first roll on the second uh, snake, and he saves. It saves. So uh, the one that you uh, end up smacking <clears throat> most is the one that um, that Shimo has also already caused a bit of more damage to, because you're okay. trying to aim out of the way a little bit of Elrid to make sure he doesn't get blasted. So most of the brunt of it goes on the large snake that has already been smacked around by Shimo. And so, yeah, you cause it four points of damage. The other one does get a little bit of damage, but it is really only a little bit. And this is my role to make sure I didn't surge. Oh, I surged. You surged. Oh, okay. oh. <laughs> All right, hang on. I got to find this again. Oh. I had a surge table. 
roll. Um, I have it up if you want me to roll. Yeah. I got it. I got it. Roll I got 100. it. Sounds good. Mm. Uh, Just don't roll a it. five or a six. I think it's five <laughs> or a six. <laughs> nah, if you got the spicy. table. Hang on. Let me see if I can. I should pull spicy, this in now that I. Spicy. We're going to get our first wild magic surge. Do I have. But she gets, she gets back her. She gets back her, her thing. Her. Um, Tides of Chaos, which is nice. That is Every true. time you cast a spell. Yes. Keep it Hang going. On. Yeah. Hang on. Some come on, come on, come on. Spicy, not too spicy. <clears throat> Hopefully Everyone not. gets a long rest. Okay. No, I don't have that table up in here as I thought I did. So if you if you have it, why don't you roll it for me, please? Okay. Um, let's see here. Roll table two. Let's see if this works. <gasps> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> On a random creature. Okay. <laughs> All right, then we're going to get the chat in on this. Chat, I want you to help me figure out which random creature this is going to be. Flying uh, snakes. Oh, I didn't like that. Flying Let's try this. Flying snakes. So roll me an eight. Roll me an eight. If, uh, D8, if you would, please. Chat, I want to see it happen. We're going to find out who is going to get Sly. Oh, so maybe the guy could get fly. The guy up in the basket. Oh, yeah. Um, that was an interesting thing. Try, uh, what did... Oh, take the D off, Dak. Just right... Uh, there we go. Got it. Okay. Just rolled 5K. So... <laughs> All right. Actually, hang on. I gotta do this. Five. Yep. Yeah, okay, so... Shimo... Yes. <laughs> Actually, I gotta look this spell up real quick. Crouching sure tiger, right. dragon. Uh, I think it's a flying speed of sixty feet. Yeah, he can fly sixty is? feet an hour, and he can hover. I think. Yeah, Shimo, you start to feel your feet kind of lift <laughs> through the squelch of the muck in the ground. You don't go anywhere, but you now feel very light. On your feet. Yay! <laughs> yeah. Does that end your turn, Dotty? Oh uh, yeah. I'll yeah. Okay. It. Something doesn't feel right. Oh. <laughs> All right. So then that brings us to Elred. Elred, you've got your hand around a very thick-necked snake, yeah. and of course the other one's been beat up a bit. This one hasn't had a lot of damage done to it yet. Well, then let's change that. Uh, I'm. Hmm. One second. All right. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to take a swing at this th thing on me or that I've got with my. For sure. uh, Cutlass with advantage. Uh oh, okay. Yeah. Because you grappled it, right? So like Yeah. Yeah, Ooh, okay. Never mind. Nope. Oh yeah, no. It's it's writhing in your hand and trying to escape you. Yeah. Um No, you, you you only had one that one on that one, so that's okay. But uh you're still able to hold its gra hold it in your hands, but every time you swing it kind of twists itself up and out of the way. Yeah. Alright, well I've still got grappled, so yeah. Okay. Uh, that's going to be it for me. Okay. That brings us to the snakes. Ouch. Uh, <laughs> the one that's uh, that's actually being grappled by uh, Elred dislikes this intensely and is going to try and wrap its, the rest of its very long body up around Elred instead. And just kind of mm -hmm. lift up, use, use Elred, Elred's gr grasp to try and do it. Um, I'm going to need you to do a, a dexterity saving throw for me, please, Elred. Uh. Oh, uh. and you, and as you're trying to duck around and even hold your cutlass in place, <clears throat> the body just kind of pretzels around you, and you are considered grappled instead. You have lost your grapple now. Fair enough. Okay. All right. That was one. The other one is going is 
kind of recoils and hisses and sees the source of the burning hands and launches at you. Okay. If it's launching past me, can I take an attack of opportunity on it? Uh, it is not launching, it's not leaving your um, area, it's not leaving your melee range. It's still in melee range to you. Oh, okay. okay. I just realized I forgot to cast mage armor. Oh, what's <laughs> your, oh no, what's your AC? 13. Oh, you are lucky at the moment. You are lucky. Okay. Okay, because that did not hit, but that would have been a very damaging hit for you, level two person. Yes. <laughs> right? Level two sorcerer. Yeah. I'm squishy. <laughs> that brings us to Scrags. Um, Scrags is going to try to <laughs> get in between Dotty and the snake. And he's got his shield. And uh, he is going to cast a spell. So mm -hmm. can you please make me a... Uh, shit, where is it? Can you please make me a DC 13 wisdom save? And is this on the straight snake that's all, that's got that's around Elred, or is it around on the one that's atta that just attacked Dottie? Attack Dottie. Okay. One wisdom save coming up. 17. Okay, nothing happens. And uh, that's my turn. Yeah, Ooh. that's my turn. Alrighty. That brings us to Shimo. Worry not for using my newfound flight. I'm obviously going to do a amazing flying drop <laughs> kick. All right. <laughs> Roll for flying drop kick. Flying drop kick. Seven and max damage. Nice. 17 and 8 points of damage. Uh yeah. It's looking bruised finally. Okay, well, if it's still up, I'm going to follow it up with a scissor kick. Go for it. 14? Yeah, 14 hits still, Excellent. too. And so, with that scissor kick, you sense the snake kind of recoils just a little bit. Oh, All right. that's what I got. All right. Then that brings us to Dottie. Okay. Shh. Mage armor, or should I attack it? I'm gonna attack can it. I, I'm gonna be I... stupid. And I have I have my Tides of Chaos back, so I'm gonna use it on a Firebolt cantrip. Okay, and are you, which one are you Firebolting? The one on Elred, or the one that's been beat up a bunch? Oh, uh, the one that's been beat up a bunch. Sorry, Eldred. That's fine. I think Eldred will be happy that you're not shooting yeah, that fire hits. at him. Cool. <laughs> that too, yeah. It's wrapped around me, so... Sixth fire. Six I think more, more damage with this wish. than my burning hands. Yeah, yeah. your burning yeah. hands is a little off. <laughs> oh, so to be fair, technically your burning hands did do six damage. That's true, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah total. I, I have tried to interpose myself between Dottie and the snake. So, okay, I don't know if that's right. possible. Yeah, with the 16, she can still hit around you. you no, know, no, you can still hit, but I'm just saying that would the snake be like, more likely to go for me than Dottie? Oh, well, you'll have to find out. Yeah. <clears throat> I took a risk. It's okay. Yeah. So, All, right. All right. I clicked show spell description. I apologize for the mess that it created. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Life happens. All okay, right. so. Elred. Swinging. You're swinging. swinging. Okay, you can't, you can't swing. Oh, Unless okay. you're planning on swinging like that. <laughs> am, I, am I restrained too? Like, I obviously, I'd be at disadvantage. It would... Oh. Um, until the, no, you, are you, no, you are restrained. You are restrained. You are restrained. Let's okay. just use my breath weapon, actually. Hey, all right. Um, nice. And I'll try to do it down so it doesn't hit anyone else. Yeah, for sure. Because the like the snake is like this far off your chest, yeah, wrapped so, around you right so I'm now. I'm right? looking down and just like. <sighs> um, okay. What's yeah, the so dex? The... It's a dex save. Yeah, and the DC, it's. 12 right now okay so because he's like, like you're like right looking at it i'm going to give this thing disadvantage on the deck save as well mm. either way it still makes it unfortunately uh, so well, somehow still... he's able to just kind of just move still... maybe he 
pushes Brain off with damage? his tail and knocks you around off so that you kind of lift your chin and don't actually ma hit the target the way you intend to. So three damage you said? Uh, uh, no, it rolls down. It rounds down. Okay. Sorry, yeah. whoops. Two. Okay. All Psychic right. Psychic damage. Psychic damage. Ooh. Yes, I'm an emerald dragonborn. You hear a little bit of a... Coming from the from the head uh, of the snake, yeah. which is actually a little bit of a distance away from you. Uh, yeah, that'll be it. All right. Um, let's constrict uh, the one that's around Alred is gonna try and put the squeeze on him. Yeah. Oh, there was a lot of dice there. Oh, you are lucky. Oh, one of those is the disadvantage. What, what's your AC? Nineteen. Yeah. Notice what that damage would have been I so you see can't. feel it kind of sweet it kind of twist around you and kind of um you can hear the metal of the armor just kind of just kind of uh, crumpling just a tiny bit but no damage to you yet All right. the other snake is going to recoil back and kind of slither backwards towards the front <coughs> of the um of the tower that's going to give Scrags and Shimo an attack of opportunity if they want one. Yes, oh, yeah. I do. 23. Oof. Oh, yeah. That definitely is going to do some damage. Eight, eight damage again. Uh, okay, I'll take my attack. <laughs> Nine. <laughs> yeah, you, you swing with your dad. You kind of pull out the dagger and, and go at it. But it's already been smacked out of your way by Shimo's hand. So Shimo hit it hard mm. enough that it actually that you ended up missing. Shimo, it's, what are you doing? It still really hurt though, and that's going to. But it is still going to leave your area and slither, somewhat painfully looking slither towards the front of the uh, tower again. And that brings us to Scrags. No escape. DC 13 save, please. Uh, sorry, it's wisdom. Wisdom save. Wisdom save of the 13. First roll is a 17. So that is going to say. These are really smart snakes. <laughs> wise. Uh, yeah, wise. <laughs> um, Scrags is going to do his special ability, which is. Shimo, it's your turn. <laughs> That's a good turn. ability. No. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Shimo, it is your my turn. Secret, my secret attack. Right. Get him. <laughs> um, I think killing a snake is less important than saving Elrid, so I'm going to leap yeah. over and try and rip the snake off of him. Oh, ripping him off. Okay, so this will be an athletics check. Yes. Not an attack. And... Oh, nice. <laughs> man, you've got the rolls today. You've got the rolls today. You are doing a good job. You are actually able to you re get your hands around one, uh, one of the coils of this snake, and you're able to not only yank, but you put your foot up on one of the other coils to stretch it out, and you're able to actually get Elred out enough that he's able to extricate himself from this constrictor snake. Um, Elred, you don't hold. You're not holding on to the snake, but thankfully, he's not holding on to you either anymore. Yeah. All right. So do do I have it in a grapple now? Um. I'll allow that. Yeah. Excellent. So yeah, I'll, I'll hold it. it down and say, Elred, all you. All right, but before it's Elred's turn, it's Dottie's. Oh yes, I got that backwards. <laughs> Okay. Firebolt. Howdy, don't kill me. Guess what I'm gonna do? Firebolt. Um. Kill them on all. the damaged snake. Firebolt. Oh, thank goodness! I, I don't want to burst into flames. <laughs> okay, yeah. doke. Roll your attack for your firebolt. That just hits. Okay, cool. <laughs> Go ahead and roll your damage. Fire. Yeah. Fire. Yeah, you get it, and it's looking messed up. We can have snake for dinner, guys. A log snake. All right. All right. Elred, it is your turn. Yeah, let's do this. Uh, Yeah, we're going on this thing. 
Yeah, you are. <clears throat> That's a nice roll. And you finally make a contact with that long sword. And here's uh, what it's like. I'm also smiting. <laughs> roll it in. Make it happen. Do it. Smite. Ooh. Nice. So nine you radiant. Yeah, you let your uh, blade sink into the skin. It doesn't feel like it goes as far as you wanted it to. Something about the maybe the scales on this uh, snake are a little bit tougher than you thought. So you're like, fine, and you pulse this radiant energy into it. And you can and Shimo, who now has it grappled, you can actually see underneath the sc the scales, um, right by where the uh, long sword makes contact. Just this. What color of energy would your would your smite be, uh... Alred? Probably, probably blue. Blue. So just like, this blue like nice, pulse. Like, see, you know, like a nice kind of, uh, kind of more like deeper, like you know, like the ocean, just like. Mm. Ooh. And you can actually even see some of the waves moving, moving like waves underneath the scales. Then. Flavorful. We're going for flavor. I love my flavors. Here we go. <laughs> Uh, is there anything else I guess I'll read on your turn? Uh, do I have anything to do as a bonus action? I don't think I do. Did your <laughs> did your smite partially cook the snake? No, it's <laughs> uh, it's not, sunburnt it. I would say it's not really. I feel like El Red's smite, like even though it's radiant, it's not really heat. It's, <laughs> okay. it's just energy. It's Cold uh, fusion. Yeah, and there my you go. my breath was also. Not fire, so definitely didn't cook it. I'm just totally trying to fry this thing. Oh, uh, yeah, I am done though. Okay, cool. So then we bring our to the snakes. The really, really hurt one now is making a tough decision. It's like, I don't think I'm gonna survive this, and so it's gonna launch a dotty uh, and try to uh, get it. I get to... an opportunity attack on the way, or is it moving? Around. No, it's far away. It's a long ways away from you. It's probably about twenty okay. to thirty feet away from you at the mo at the moment. So it's going to go oh, for Dottie. Oh, okay, I think I was misunderstanding when it moved. It was moving. The other well, this direction. is this this is the hurt one. It was the one that was trying to retreat. No, I know. And Dottie wouldn't let it. So, yeah, Dottie, that's eighteen to hit. Oh yeah, that hits. That's ten <sighs> points of piercing damage as it, as the whole jaw <laughs> just basically grips around your chest. Because it's big enough that it can actually just, and you can actually even feel it kind of pull, trying to pull you in, okay, but it no. can't get you in, so it releases. Are you alive? Oh, okay. I am alive. I have six hit points. That's, That's gonna good. bring us to the other snake, who is now just been pulsed by radiant energy with a long sword, and he's gonna try and twist around and attack. Uh, Scrags. Shimo. <laughs> he's going to try and attack Shimo. He wants to be let go. Uh, so he's going to go for a bite attack on Shimo. I have a 17 armor class. Yeah, that, and then he does. You're able to. You're able to fly out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> you still have a grip on it, but now it's Scrags' turn. <clears throat> Well, he's going to notice that one of them has gripped Daddy. He says, no, that's my job. And he will make <laughs> <What>? a... <laughs> make... <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. All right. Wait, wait, wait. What way did that come out? Just in case. <laughs> attacking, attacking players is my job. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. No, no. Wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> Jesus oh no! Oh no! No, 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 no. Attacking players is my job. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. No, okay. So what do you feel about that? <laughs> How does this dog oh, feel man. about that? <laughs> That came out wrong, okay? <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Attacking players is my job. All right, um, Jags, what are you doing? Oh, uh, DC 13 wisdom save. At what stage you've got to miss one of these? i got to find my clip button. Where the hell is my clip button? Somebody make a clip of that. That was brilliant. Oh, my God. No, 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 no,
That was hilarious. Okay, so what are you doing again? I'm sorry, I totally distracted myself. Uh, wisdom, DC 13 wisdom. Mm. Okay, oh, I'm God. crying. Oh my gosh. Okay. So, so <coughs> uh, doesn't save this time. <laughs> you threw him off yes. enough that he doesn't save. Yeah. <laughs> so he's going to take. <laughs> he's going to take seven damage. All right. Necrotic. Seven damage. Yeah, he does. He's not looking the greatest anymore. He's still alive. Bloody hell. It's a tough customer. These are tough um, customers indeed. He will try to again move to inter to interpose himself between Dottie and okay. the snake. I'm getting a story here. Okay, Shimo. Yeah. You're up. Shimo. <laughs> I'm going to fly slightly into the air and then spinning suplex the snake. Ooh, okay. Give her. Whoa. It just hits. It just hits. For six damage. All right. Bonus action and, movement. Um, I'm going to bonus action just like a punch onto the face. Oh, okay, cool. A little bit of movement to do that, but that's nah. okay. Nah, and it, it kind of, the face jumps <coughs> out of the way this time. Oh, hang uh, on, you have it grappled. Yes, so, I do have it grappled. You have it grappled, which means it's an advantage. Oh, excellent. So 16. So that's 16 that hits. hits. Yeah, so you just kind of fly up, lift the lift the thing with you, and yank it so that it's, so you basically, like, paddle ball the face into your fist. Excellent. Yeah, oh, it's now looking uh, a little messed up. That, and that we're still in melee with Elred, correct? That is correct, yes. Oh, okay, then yeah. Then I'm just going to hold it in place. Alrighty. Dottie, it's your turn. All right. So, um, I'm going to look at the snake who's hurt and just bit me. And um, you're going to see uh, flames um, coming out of my fingertips, um, shooting towards the snake. And he'll need to make a uh, dexterity saving throw as I cast Burning Hands again. Awesome. You have to reach around Scrags to do it. That's fine. Because yeah, okay. So that means you actually move to the side of Scrags. You Scrags, yeah. you're no longer interposing Dottie. Um, and that was well, that a nice nineteen damage, to save, though. So, but it's still it's five, five points of damage. It's not. It's not slithering much anymore. It's limping more. Okay. And then, um, that's it for me. Dottie's extremely reckless, so <laughs> these are her moves, <laughs> oh, not mine. Would, would she have to roll on the wild magic? I did. did. I'm safe oh. this time. This time you're safe. Yeah. Oh. Okay. All right. So, Alred, you're up. Yeah, I'll smack this thing again. Alrighty. Mm. Ooh, nice. Oh, yeah, that was a nice one. Oh. You that's definitely a connect. That's a meaty. Just like, he's got it pinned down, I just... Oh. You feel like it's actually sinking deep in this time. It's look like you found that one bruised spot Shima left behind. Sink it into the skin. It's getting, it's 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 getting screwed up. Good tonight. Anything else? Uh no. Uh well. No, I think I'm gonna stay here. Okie doke. That brings us to the snakes, who are both feeling like they're on their last chances. And they, they both also feel like they're not going to get out of this if they don't do something about it. So, again, another attack at Dottie. I took the risk. And that is 12 points of damage. I'm down. Oh, you are down. Dottie is <clears throat> down. Alrighty. No, that was too many people. Hang on. That was fun. Okay. How did I, how did I do that? That was um... cool. Dottie is down. I will say, though, with her Tides of Chaos thing, anytime that she casts a spell, you can decide to roll yeah, on the that's wild true. magic. But she she already rolled, so we were all good that way. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the, yeah, you guys watch as the, the very hard <coughs> snake takes one last almost feeble attempt to attack, but seem, somehow, somehow manages to get a better grip. And her whole head and top half of her torso go into the giant constrictor snake's mouth. 
and is starting to kind of get pulled in. <laughs> oh, God. That's so unfortunate. Okay, and you yeah. get like big bulge, the hinges, on the jaw unhinges, the whole works. Scrags, that brings us to you. Um, if you can kill the slug, uh, you are. Uh, Fudge. Um, okay, Wisdom TC 13 saving throw. All right, here it comes. <laughs> I don't think that's going to make it. So roll your damage. All right, so it's a d12. 10. Nice. <laughs> Tell me how it dies. <clears throat> um, it hears like a little tinkling. Ding, 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 ding. And it just collapses from the fear of the bells. The whole giant constrictor snake drops to the ground. Half of Dottie exp uh, legs out of its mouth, but its <clears throat> eyes are now completely clouded over and no I, more swallowing. I try to pull her out and then I look behind me to see how the two guys are getting on and then I'll shout, Shimo, your turn! All right. All right, so I'm going to start by taking an unarmed strike against the snake I'm holding down. Go for it. For 21 and 7 <clears throat> damage. Nice. It's really hurt. And I'm going to bonus action healing word on Dottie. Oh, oh nice. nice. Ooh, good. Uh, that's a 1d4, right? It is. 1d4 three. plus wisdom. Yes. Oh. No, hang tight. Hang on. I don't think so. it's plus your wisdom. So hang on a second. I think that's only cure wounds. Do the spell. No, no, it's uh, cure wounds is one d eight, so it's one d four plus wisdom. Yeah, but I don't think you actually add a modifier to it. I think it is just. Uh, no, it is. Uh, I copied. Never mind. I stand corrected. So, so what's that's your wisdom modifier. Four, five, six, seven. Seven health back. <laughs> so Yay! you are back up to seven health, Dottie. No death saving throws required for you. <laughs> However, okay. you, you your eyes kind of flutter to consciousness, and pasted up against your face is a very slimy feeling. It's dark. It's slimy across your face. You put twiggle your toes; they feel free, but the face feels completely slimed up. <laughs> so as soon as I come to consciousness, she's freaking out. <laughs> she's gonna be like, ah, ah. "It is actually your turn too." Um. Can I pull myself free from? Yeah, and it, it, it won't. I, I won't make it take a whole action to do that. I'll say it's a bonus action. Okay, cool. So I'm going to. Because you're not fighting it to get out, it's dead. Cool. Yeah, I'm gonna run away from the dead snake, um, and then kind of look at the situation with Shimo and Elred. Um, can I firebolt that snake without hitting any of them? You can certainly try. It's a big snake, so probably can. Okay. I mean, if you roll on that one, I have to do something about it. But... <laughs> <laughs> You're pretty oh, you confident. You kind of, kind of slime in the <clears throat> eyes, just kind of aiming, and you think you got it, and no, you ended up hitting a, a small vine behind the snake instead of the snake itself. Okay. Damn it. That's me. <laughs> All right. That brings us to Elred. All right. Uh, yeah, you know the drill. I do, and I like it's the drill. getting a longsword in the throat. Though it's a snake, so it's like all throat. <laughs> all right. Oof. Oh, it it <sighs> manages. It's, it's like in its last ditch attempts to try to escape things. It just does a little dodge, and you just shave a, a oh, scale. Oh, is it not almost still grappled? Oh, it is still grappled by Shimo. You are right. That does attack. That then you're right. That does actually hit. Good call. Thank you for that. So it does. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and tell me how you kill it then. Ooh yeah. Uh yeah. I think just <clears throat> straight guillotine. Like <laughs> like just just take the cutlass and bring it down. On the head. The head kind of flops off, you fit, push the rest of the way through to, to, to cut it through, and the whole thing falls limp. Shimo, you're actually kind of brought down by it a little bit in, in, in height from where you were flying. 
and you guys are now quiet and peaceful. Yeah. Um. Did anybody but Dottie get hurt in that? Nope. No, I'm fine. Just you, I think. <laughs> just me. Uh, uh, I just Dottie. Uh, I'm gonna lay on hands. But, uh, you're. You you your max health is sixteen, right? Yep. All right, cool. Yeah, I'm gonna use, um, nine. Uh, nine of my lay on hands hit points. That means you only have one left, right? Yeah, that's yeah. enough to bring someone up. <laughs> that is definitely true. <laughs> Thank you. Um, while well, he does that, oh, sorry. Sorry, as you, as the, the it kind of gets silent and just a little bit of heavy breathing, a little voice comes from above you in the ba basket. I told you not to speak. I'm going to float up to him. <sighs> just, like, confidently. Perfect. And hold out my arms and say, My lead. <laughs> that was the what, perfect spell. What you see... I know. Like, how could you come up with a better narrative? So, <laughs> as you kind of get up over top of the to the basket, what you see inside it is a um, very deceased bullywug, and you also see a cage with this strange pink serpentine-looking creature with a very interesting mustache and a monocle, and it looks up to you and says. Oh, how marvelous. That will certainly help. And that's where we're going to end. Yay. Woo. <laughs> so before we completely close this all off, I'm going to give you guys a heads up. Y'all need to be ready to level up after your long rest. Yes, I need a long rest. Yay. So we are totally leveling you guys up, but you got to get to your long rest first before it can happen. But that doesn't mean you can't plan your le level ups. So you can go ahead and level up to three in your mind, but until you're done your long rest, it doesn't actually take effect. This goes to level eight, does it? Uh, it goes till we're done leveling. Oh, it goes, okay. Yeah, yeah, it goes for a while. I hope you guys okay. are ready for Kung Fu Bear. <laughs> I am I do have a question. I do have a question. Um, sure. There is a spell that I would like to take, um, but it does have a it does have the caveat that it works with beasts, which he is a beast. It does have the caveat of uh, only working with beasts with intelligence four or under. Okay. I I'm wondering, would you allow? Would you allow? Uh, it's beast bond, so I can telepathically communicate with. Um, with with Shimo when he's in his beast form, when he's a uh, whatever he is, oh. but it also does other things. But it takes like a it takes a it takes some of my action, I think, or I have to be within five feet of him or something, and he will get some sort of advantage. All right, well, but you'll have to specifically, give me, yeah, you'll have to give me a little bit to read through that one and kind of consider all of the implications. Yeah, yeah. for the mechanics, we'll but. Like uh, it, at, at base look, I would say probably, but I have to look for sure. Yeah, uh, if necessary, we could change it slightly to be less dramatic. For sure. Yeah, we can totally home yeah. it. I don't mind that. And but that is where we end today's session. So, <clears> all those people online, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. much. Uh, we'll be back again on. Uh, there's a Thursday session with Veyrod. He's running Curse of Strahd on Thursday. Uh, we'll be back in here again with Sunken Citadel. And then there's some sessions happening on the weekend as well, including um, Dynamite is running a uh, an another uh, Sunless Citadel uh, episode. And uh, there's some stuff that's happening only on the Discord. And that is um, DM Rogue is running on. Uh, the D D uh, Discord only games. So if you want to get involved, you have to join the Discord uh, to do so. And the way that you can do that is uh, you could, can still sneak into the game. You won't be able to talk, but you can certainly listen in. You can chat in one of the uh, open channels that are there. So you can still be entertained by the onlineness of D and D. And thank you guys once again, everyone. We're gonna go find somebody to raid here. Who should we raid? All right. Well, I'm gonna hop off. But thank you guys very much. Cheers. Thank See you. Ya. All, All right, right. So I'll hit chat. Oh, go for oh, it, Shimo. Uh, 
I just had a question about the uh, the 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 emotes. Uh, what are their pixel size? They are oh gosh. Um, if you give them to me big, I can I can fix them. I have a some background in graphic design anyway. I don't mind doing that. Oh, I was going to give them to you small. Uh, oh, they would need to be a bit bigger if you can. Uh, otherwise, they get kind of ugly. But um, mm -hmm. I guess what's the smallest? Like 112 or something like that. Um, because I I like pixel art, so I'd love to try and make some. Oh yeah, so make one at 256, and that would be perfect. 256. All right, I'll look yeah. into it. <laughs> why don't Why don't we raid? Why don't we raid Slash Key again? Slash Key's a good dude. I gotta remind myself how to do that properly. <laughs> All um, right, well, I'm gonna head out. That was a lot of fun.